That was, of course, Satin Dahl. Hey, everybody, my name is John Pru. Welcome. So glad to be here today to talk with you about six great standards that you all know and love and talk about chord substitutions and why these chord substitutions work so well with the melodies of these songs. So let's get right to it. Here we go. So today I'm going to talk about three different ways of using the five chord, but substituting chords for that five chord. So we're going to dive in instead of just talking about the, the chord progressions by themselves, I thought we would use the chord progressions within the context of songs that you already know, some jazz standards. The first song I want to demonstrate is a song that you've all heard of, Satin Doll. Interesting, right? So you hear that and you go, that doesn't sound quite like a 2-5-1, does it? We're used to sort of hearing this. But there's a lot more going on than just 2-5-1. There's, there's four different chords before we even get to that one chord. So let's break it down. First of all, this first example, uh, instead of just going 5-1, what we're doing, if we look at the chord right before the one chord, it's D flat 7 going to the one chord. That's a half step up above C. That's also what's called the tritone substitution. Maybe you've heard that terminology before and wondered, what is that? And I know I struggled with that too for a while until it was explained to me, which I think makes a lot of sense. And it goes like this. If you have the root in your left hand of the five chord, which is G7, and your right hand plays the seventh and the third, and then rather than playing the five, you play the tritone with your left hand, but you keep your right hand the same. Now you have the third and the seventh. So what just happened? The seven and third switched from the G7 to the three and seven of the D flat. That's why the tritones work. So I wanted to put that out there first. So we have the tritone to the one. Really cool sound, right? But now there's this other chord in front of that tritone, an A flat minor nine. You say, well, what is that doing there? So the way that we think about these chords is that oftentimes if you see a five chord, in this case, D flat seven, oftentimes jazz musicians will say, well, D flat is five normally in the key of what? In this case, D flat is five in the key of G flat major, right? So then we'd say, okay, well, what is two in the key of G flat major? And that's A flat minor. So we have A flat minor, D flat nine. But rather than going to G flat, like we're used to hearing, we're going A flat minor nine, D flat nine, C major nine. A really kind of, uh, it sort of takes you for a loop because you're not really expecting to, to hear that. But that's what also makes it really hip. So we have A flat minor, D flat nine, C major nine. Now let's back it up to the measure before then. Rather than just having a D seven, or which would be a two chord, again, they say, well, D is five normally in the key of what? G major. Okay, well, what's two in the key of G major? A minor seven. So again, instead of going A minor, D7, G major, like we're used to hearing, we go A minor, 7, D7. Uh, seven. Now we do this A flat minor, D flat 9, and then finally resolve. So we're kind of weaving our way around until we finally get to the one chord. So let's try that together. Uh, but before we do, let's just talk about the uh, names of these chords. So A, A minor 11, left hand's playing root 7, Right hand's playing the 5th, the ninth, and the 11th. For the D9 chord, left hand plays the root, 3, 7. Right hand plays the 9, 5, 7, doubling the 7, and then going up to the melody note there. A flat minor 9, left hand plays the root and the 7th. Right hand plays the 3rd, the 5th, and the 9th. Beautiful chord. And then D flat 9, left hand plays the root and the 3rd. Right hand plays the 7th, the ninth, and the 5. And then C major 9, we have root 3. Left hand, right hand, 7, 9, 5. All right, so let's put it all together. Here we go. 2, 3, 4. Let's repeat that one more time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. Really cool sound and something that you can use on any song, but this is a great one to use as an example. All right, so we have another example of the tritone substitution for the five. 
in a song that you probably all have heard as well called Moonlight in Vermont. And it uses that same idea if we, if we look at, well, let me play the f whole thing first. that last part of that that's the the end part of the the song you and I and moonlight in Vermont and notice again it has that same chord progression as in satin doll where we have the a minor to D 13 a flat minor to D flat 13 to C major 7 so it's that same idea of the tritone with a two in front of it and then the two chord with a two in front of that and notice this first chord too is a sharp 11 dom dominant chord. And you say, well, why is that a sharp 11? Well, look at the melody. We have a G sharp in the melody. So that is the sharp 11, isn't it? You and I and... And now here's the A minor, D13, A flat minor, D flat 13, and C major 9. Let's try that together. Here we go. One, two, three, and... it is the end of the song we can do a little bit of a retard on those last four chords so let's try that three four let's retard here beautiful okay so our next example we're going to talk about the five chord as being the seven or the leading tone so let me explain if we're in the key of C what is the leading tone of C that would be B which is they also call in solfege T, right? Like T, Do. And so that is often used as a five chord substitution. So you may hear this, B7, C, B7, C. It's very, it has a very strong relationship. It really wants to resolve that leading tone, wants to resolve to the one chord. And so I thought what we would do is well, let's use an example of a song. And this is a song that, again, you probably all have heard this song, It Could Happen to You. And where we can demonstrate this 7-1 relationship. So I'm gonna play through it once first and then we'll break it down together. So here we go. That's part of the song, right? Lock your dreams at night, it could happen to you. So if you, if you look at that and you say, okay, let's back up from the last chord, that's a C major, nine, that's the one chord. And we look at the penultimate chord there and we see, oh, it's a B7 the flat nine, that's what that C is there. And then it resolves to the one. And notice even the melody is the fifth. So it works really well with that leading tone. Again, this is a sub for traditionally what would be the five chord. Let's see what would happen if we actually use the five chord there and see if it would work. No, it doesn't work, does it? <laughs> because of that Look at the melody, it's got that F sharp in there. And there's no F sharp in G7. So that's why we have to come up with some other chord to make that work. And this B7 works great. And then we say, let's back up a step further. And again, it's that idea of every five chord is five in the key of something else. So B7 is five in the key of normally E major, right? So let me say, well, what's two in the key of E major? And we'd say that's F sharp. So we have this F sharp, in this case, it's a minor seven flat five. So left hand's playing root seven, three, flat five, and then to the B seven flat nine, and then to the one chord. Isn't that interesting? So we have this, if we were just listening to the bass, it would sound like this. Pretty interesting, kind of quirky sounding, but it really works, especially with this song. Um, this is a song that's done in the swing style, kind of medium tempo. So let's try it, this together, maybe a little slower at first. So we'll go about this tempo. Uh, one, two, three, four, one, two. Cool, huh? Let's try it again. One, two, three, four. Again, another great way of going five to one without using the actual five chord, in this case, doing a half step below, also called the leading tone. So for our next example, we're going to use the same chord progression with the seven one or the leading tone, but we're using another song example, another 
song actually also written by Jimmy Van Houston and Johnny Burke, by the way. And this is a song called Like Someone in Love. I'm sure you've all heard the tune. So I'm going to play it through once so you can hear it first, and then we'll break it down. Beautiful, huh? The melody really fits with that 7-1 chord progression. So let's look at this. We have, again, here's the root. The last chord is C6-9. We look at the chord right before that, and we have this B7 flat 9 to the 1. In this case, the melody is the 7th of the B7, so we have da da. Do you remember in the previ previous example, we had 5 5. In this case, we have 7 5. Both of them work really great. Then we look at, again, the chord right before the B7. We say, well, B7 is normally 5 in the key of E. So we say, what's 2 in the key of E? That's F sharp. So we have F sharp minor 7 flat 5 to B7 flat 9 and then to the 1 chord. Now notice on this example I put in one other little uh, beautiful note on the B7 flat 9. Does anyone catch that? Listen again. You guys hear that note? That's what's called the sharp 11. I love the sound of the sharp 11 and notice it resolves then to the 5th. So I love the uh, sort of the inner voices that you can use in these chord progressions. Let's try this together again, medium tempo. We'll start maybe a little slower at first and work our way up. So here we go. One and two, three, four. Great. Let's try one more time. Two, three, four. So again, another example of the seven to the one or the leading tone, like someone in love. All right, so the third substitution we're gonna talk about is resolving to the one chord by a whole step below. So substituting five in the key of C, again, which is G, for flat seven in that key. So what's flat seven in the key of C? That would be B flat seven, right? So it's going down a whole step and then resolving to the one chord. Um, that kind of one flat seven one, you probably heard that a lot of times. I think of the song Killer Joe, right? That's one example that just comes to mind. Um, that flat seven one, or there's another tune, um, Old Devil Moon, that goes back and forth between the one and the flat seven. So that's a really typical chord progression. Um, and in this case, we also are adding in one other chord. And this is a song that's uh, maybe a little bit more obscure, not a standard in the uh, Great American Songbook repertoire, but in the jazz repertoire, a Charlie Parker song called Yardbird Suite. And it goes like this. Maybe you've heard that tune before. And so again, what we have is flat seven. So let's take a look at the one chord again. We have root three, six, nine, five. That's, that's the one chord. And then we go down a whole step. So we have B flat seven, root seven, nine, three, seven, double the seven there. So we go from seven to one. Really interesting, right? Again, it works. There's that strong relationship. It still wants to resolve. And then we go, okay, well, why is there another chord in front of it? We look at that and say, well, there's an F minor chord. What is that doing there? Well, again, if we look at the five chord by itself, B flat seven, and say, what is that five in the key of normally? B flat seven is five in the key of E flat normally, right? So then you say, okay, well, what is two in the key of E flat? That's F minor. So rather than going two, five, one in the key of E flat major, we're going two, five, oh, and resolving to C. Really interesting. All right, so let's play this Yardbird Suite together. Maybe a little slower the first time and then more at tempo the second time. Here we go. A one, two, three, four. And if you do the rest of the song, da 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 right? So let's try it uh, now a little bit faster about da 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 about that tempo. A one, two, a one, two, three, four. Nice, huh? So we have this minor four, they also call it minor four flat seven 
one. Another great chord progression to use in place of the normal five chord. All right, great. So our next example is a song that you all have heard before. It's It Could Happen to You, and it's using that same chord progression, the flat seven to one. So if we're in the key of C major, the flat seven would be B flat seven to one. And I'm gonna play through the example and then we'll, we can break it down together. So here we go. Beautiful, right? And so we have this minor four, flat seven, one chord progression. Beautiful chord progression. And so we say, okay, well, let's break that down and look at these chords exactly. So we have the one chord, C major seven. The chord right before it is B flat seven, right? Root five, seven, three. And then the chord right before that is, is a B flat nine sus. And the sus refers to the suspended note. Sometimes I ask students to say, what does a sus mean? And the usual response is sustain, which that's a sustain pedal, right? But when we're talking about a suspended chord, that means that the fourth is suspended and usually then resolves to the third. So they call that a four, three suspension. So we have this. In this case, the sus is actually resolving out to the fifth, but usually it resolves into the third. And then before that, we have this F minor seven chord. But look at right before the F minor seven chord, it says F minor, and then parentheses, major seven. That's an interesting chord, isn't it? You have a minor chord with the major seven on top. It's also called the spy chord. Maybe you've heard that before, you know? It was a dark night in the streets of New York. <laughs> but anyway, it's that kind of dark minor major seven, and then to the minor seven, to the sus, to the seventh, and then resolve. A lot happening in those two bars, really beautiful. Let's try to play that together. Here we go. Maybe a little slower at first. One, a two, a one, two, three, four. Maybe a little brighter. A two, a one, two, three, four. So that's just another example of this flat seven, one relationship, or in this case, minor four, flat seven, one, a substitute for five. It could happen to you. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the lesson, be sure to check out pianowithjohnny.com. We have over 1,000 step-by-step lessons for all playing levels, where you'll learn your favorite songs, styles, and how to improvise at the piano. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.